some of you uh, follow a lot of uh, Dungeons & Dragons news may know about the Monsters of the Multiverse uh, leaks. Uh, they pretty much released all the races that they're going to, uh, they're going to be presented in this book. Um, so one big thing they did was turn a lot of the sub-races into their own race. This I don't mind. Um, it allows for them to keep a lot of the cool sub-race abilities well, like removing the downside abilities they have to give to make them cool, like sunlight sensitivity. Um, in the case of like Dugar and Deep Knowns, while well, still counting those races as those races for the purpose of race or feats. So, you know, you can still play in Elandrin and have them have Evelyn Accuracy. Um, <laughs> I know it's like one of the most hated ones, but um, yeah. Uh, and a lot of some people were complaining, I think, that the um like eldrin's and um the feywild equivalent of that um should not be treated as elf for the purpose of like the same race so uh, i think i it makes sense um to do that so that's one of the changes i didn't mind about it um another uh ch one change that i thought was really interesting was they removed a ton of the skill proficiencies. Now, this, again, I don't mind a ton um, because it was kind of restrictive. Like, for Minotaur, the uh, ability was, um, like, it gave you, like, intimidation proficiency, right? Which, I mean, like, that's fine, but if I want to play a Minotaur that isn't intimidating or, like, that's just a useful and useless like trait and i think what they're trying to do for a lot of these abilities and go back and take away the ones that wouldn't be used like just feel idle um the one the minute the ability the minotaur got in return was just labyrinth in call which is like just allows them to know direction and stuff which is eh but um it's it's nice i guess and for a lot of these they just gave more options to the um like the preferences but they also removed the concept of, of like sub races altogether like um genocide are each treated as their own race um <clears throat> which allows again for more um color and and abilities for each because it was kind of bland at first with the with the genasi um and or they give like just different types for that ability right so like with asmr um they just say oh you can have one of three or this is not classified as the three sub types of asmr and same with the shifter and one thing like with the shifter each different type got a skill proficiency right now it just says you can choose from one of any of those which is fine um and the ones that they did you know of course as i mentioned they added more options for those skills um or put new new abilities in place uh and also again they pretty much removed all of the like weapon proficiencies which um i'm happy about that's one of the things that annoyed me the most <laughs> as um when i was because if i if i was going to play something like a wizard or something there's not many options where i ever need weapon proficiency um, in a race. And then if I'm going to play a fighter, I pretty much already get all the weapons I'll ever need. Um, one way they remedied this, though, is with the elves. Their trans feature is a lot more specific. What it does now is it specifies that long rests for elves only take four hours, which is, um, which is a nice specificity. <clears throat> and also, um, because what they did is they gave Fey Antracy to a lot of other build, uh, classes, they made it just you advantage on charmed and then for the trance part that's where you can't be put to sleep pretty much all of like the former elf sub races get this and um also it's interesting about the trance is they took away some of like the proficiencies and what they instead gave them is um you can choose two proficiencies and two weapon skill and weapon proficiencies uh during that long rest trance and switch them out and get those um which is like pretty powerful, I would say, but it's it's a really nice ability to have because um, like 
you get the ones you need when you need it. Um, like, I don't know if it were elves particularly needed this buff, because they're already pretty good, because they get elven accuracy and, and um, just four hours long rests. But um, I, I like the ability, because it's like, it, you, you get to that, use that things you actually want, which is um, nice. Um, as expected with spellcasting, because pretty much all the new races you get to cast that spell not only as a racial feature, but using your actual spell slots. But they, they did something even better, is you get to choose what you want as your casting stat. It can be Wisdom, Intelligence, or Charisma, which is nice, because you can just match it up with whatever, whatever spell casting class you are, so it doesn't feel um, useless. Uh, so spellcasting costs that gets or pretty much it got buffed. Um, so that was pretty much expected. Uh, but the casting modifier part is nice. Now rant time. All of the level abilities got changed to proficiency. What I mean by this is, for example, with um, with goblins. Uh, that had the Fury of Small ability. Formerly it was once per short rest you could deal damage, um, additional damage equal to your level, is now proficiency. Honestly, for this one it is not terrible because essentially what, uh, oh, it was short rest, but essentially what they did is, uh, I'll talk about this as well with Perfect because he talks about it's in line with proficiencies, is all of the per short rest abilities got changed to per proficiency. This essentially means that because wizards realize that you, while well, you should be getting, um, you know, like three to four short rests per like dungeon or battle, it often isn't that way with most games. So they just decided to do proficiency modifier to get it to the level they want. Um, now I don't mind this um, because as a whole, it does make things better that are short rest. Uh, and this does kind of compensate for the loss to Fury of the Small, because while it is less damage, um, you get to use it more times. Not only that, but it feels better at lower levels. Because um, basically, you know, it starts off, you get to do it two times for two damage, opposed to like one time for to between one and like four damage. Um, and then it becomes three times for three damage, opposed to one time to five to seven damage so again three is it's just better um and then so on and so on and you know level 20 you're gonna have six times for a total of 36 damage rather than just once for 20. um and it, but if again if you short rest you can do that technically for more times but still it's pretty solid i don't mind this change at all but for the other ones it's a direct nerf with the shifters um while their shifting ability was originally uh level plus constitution modifier uh temporary hit points is now two plus proficiency yeah you heard that right you could get a, a maximum of 25 before now you can get a maximum of eight you can get eight at third level with shifter before that is such a big nerf. Now, again, this is per short rest, which means you get to use it more. But the fact that it's not constitution plus proficiency, uh, just put two, one hurts a lot. And second of all, um, like, this is their one cool ability, essentially. And it's like the big thing, right? They get to turn and it's a transformation that gets to turn their shifter and feel cool and this like i get it if they're just trying to remove well i mean i don't get it if they're just trying to move like the concept of like level from most abilities because um why <laughs> it's uh, i don't did they feel the need to nerf stuff because they gave more time proficiency per per short rest I, I'm just I don't understand why they did this I, I don't think shifter needed a nerf or goblin like it was just fun to deal with long damage for one attack 
And then like temporary HP is pretty cheap to get. You only get one source you can use anyways. Like if another ally can just give a better source of temporary points, this is even worse. I, I don't know. Um, this, this one upset me. I didn't agree with it, but uh, shifter, like, because we get the more short rest, that's, it's not terrible, but <sighs> ASMR, ASMR, it's a per long rest ability and it, the change is what, uh, this follows the same rules. So instead of once per turn level damage, it's once per turn proficiency, which is a massive nerf. The one, and not only this, but um, like most racial abilities now, you can choose what you want it to be, right? So, but with the fear ability for the Fallen Ismar, it's still just a charisma say, charisma for the DC. You don't get to choose like some other races. This is like the only one except for the ones like the Minotaur's Rush because those are physical abilities that you're already using the attack for so it doesn't make a huge difference right but and like the aura the only caveat benefit right is that the aura does proficiency instead of half and you don't take damage so instead of dealing 5 to you and 10 to enemies at 20th level it would be none to you and six to enemies so i'm fine with the aura but if you're going to like boost this much either make the ability a short rest ability or make it not once per turn for the attack. Like, ah, it is so weak now. This is the one powerful ability you can always get, like I was saying with Shifter. And like, it's supposed to feel powerful and cool, like a transformation. This doesn't feel like that at all. Um, I would say that the one thing, okay. So what they get be different instead, instead of level healing, they get a pool a proficiency number of d4s which they can spend any number of to heal this is actually much better um because it's like lay on hands you can just spend one to get people up from zero which is feels good and then a lot of things go with rolling like you know maximizing stuff with like the chain um well ability so this is nice i like this ability but i would say like we're just losing a lot more for that so I'm I, I'm angry about that. I'm still gonna allow Ace, the normal ASMR in my home games because that's that's uh, that's upsetting. One thing they did by making uh, everything more uniform is they took away some of the spice of some of the um, classes. Like they took away the known cunning and um, the lizard folk crafting ability, which is a real bummer. Um, because I know that they're like specified, but I love those little gnome inventions. They're so fun. I'm gonna keep them, the old ones in my own games. But um, that so that's a bit disappointing. But I get I get the reasoning for doing it. I hope they release like some crafting rules in return for this. Like, like keeping this would be weird because they just have crafting rules to do the same thing out of racial. But we'll see. Also, um, the Genesee, uh, the Fire Genesee. They only they just see shades of gray for dark vision instead of shades of red, which was like fun because it's like infra infrared vision. So I mean, whatever. And then they also remove constitution for the casting modifiers for the Genasi abilities, which is a bit disappointing because it was so unique. Um, but I get I get their reasoning, so that's not a huge big deal for me. Um, like most of the buffs are a benefit. Um, they reduced Rakakra flying speed by. 20 feet to just 30 feet but who needs 50 feet of flying speed so that's fine um but they also gave them like gust of wind i think as in return for it so that's fine um bugbear got a nice nice little um quality of life buff they can squeeze um with the stealthy ability and then also they deal 2d6 damage to any com any combatant who hasn't gone to combat instead of just dealing it once so they can have a really big early turn. Like this with assassins is so gross. Um, Hob Goblin, Goblin is just the UA one, but I like it. Um, the help is a bonus action with like the extra buffs from helping. I, I always love being able to help like as a more viable option in combat because like support is fun. Um, and also you can use the, um, 
the saving face ability number times per proficiency modifier instead of short rest, which again is just the same as the other one, but it's still nice. Um, Kenku, oh, again, this is one thing that, like removing flavor really hurt because now it's not just the echo Kenku anymore. Um, which is disappointing. I get that they wanted to make it setting as agnostic, but still. Um, but being able to give yourself advantage on any check is a really nice ability to add, which is Kenku Recall. Um, but in return, they removed the proficiencies they had, so it's fine. Um, Lizard Folk, um, they get 10 HP equal to the proficiency bonus ribbon con mod, and they can use it instead of once for sure, rest proficiency mod. So, as a whole, they got buffed. Um, so it's nice. Uh, but they moved the crafting ability, so that kind of sucks. Triton got some weird abilities. I don't really like these. They lost Wall of Water and got Water Walk instead, which is a lot. Like, you have to use, like, something in a water campaign to make it useful. I don't like it. I don't like when races get utility abilities because they're very limited. This is why utility get abilities get given to classes that can switch out their spells because you don't need them every day. I think this is a racial spell is... I don't, I don't approve. Furbo just got some nice, again, quality of life changes. You can be 3D feet shorter or taller with this guy's self now. Hidden Step, again, went to the proficiency mod instead of short rest, so. Or got a big overhaul, though. They got Relentless Endurance, um, and they got their aggressive ability changed to dash as bonus action, proficiency mods times, and gain proficiency mod 10 HP when you do so, um, as, as you move closer to the enemy as a bonus, but they lost their proficiency, uh, um, but they lost, like, their proficiencies in, like, their original ability, where you had to go closer to an enemy, but you could just only move, just move your speed, so this is better, um, the thing is, this makes me upset, because you get this shifter HP, just for this bonus dashing ability, and also on this endurance, or shifters get, like, nothing, which really upsets me, but, um, yeah, uh, so, oh, okay, rant time again, Magic resistance. So normally I wouldn't be mind magic resistance just going to spells. Because you still have a lot of creatures who use spells in enemies. But the thing is they're changing that. Literally all the monsters in Mordenkainen's will use magic effects instead of spells. Because they don't want DMs to have to keep track of like literal spell sheets. Which is, well, first of all, it's a huge nerf to counterspell. And also, it means that the amount of spells that you'll actually be encountering as a player are, like, nothing. And, look, it's fine. Like, I know that so all, all the modules beforehand you use spells, right? But you're not designing the game this way if it's moving this much forward, right? Like, you're, you're doing a slow transition to 5.5e. Essentially, what they're doing, essentially what you're saying, is in 5.5e, enemies won't have spells. Which means that magic resistance now because it's only spells is useless it's infuriating i i think just because you re remove a lot of the spells from the game just nerfs magic resistance on itself i don't think you needed this like either make it like the gnome ability where it's just like half the saving throws you make or just i don't like this at all the thing is they also uh removed the poison immunity from Yanti, so they made it just advantage and then resistance. Um, which, again, isn't terrible. Like, I don't mind the change, but the fact that they nerfed both magic resistance and that to the Yanti just. And considering that spells are so much weaker, just pisses me off. But, um. Yeah. Oh, also, a lot of races can be either small or medium sized. Uh, now, which is just a quality of life change. Fey ancestry. So a lot of like goblinkin and fey races got um, fey ancestry, but as I mentioned before, it's just advantage on charm now, which is eh. It's like just giving races dark vision. Like almost every race has um, charm immunity or some way to get advantage on charm. So like charming enemies just doesn't mean anything and just sucks if you don't have it. So um, it's whatever. Uh, they did make Genasi better. Um, they now, Fire Genasi now get Flame Blade in addition for the other spells. Um, Water Genasi get Water Walk as well. Again, 
like I said, I don't really like when they have utility spells as racial spells. Again, with like create or destroy water, there's no reason to give it because it's utility and you're never gonna ever use. Like I've seen, <laughs> no water jossy have, have I ever played with has ever ever used create destroy water as an ability. It just I don't because it's the survival campaigns and who often who doesn't who runs survival campaigns um urchin Aussie, i love this i love this so much they now get bonus action blade word that they can cast uh, um i think preferency mod times it's like an own mini rage ability it's so nice and they still get passed without trace which is a great one honestly all the all the genasi abilities are just better so i'm happy um, most of the change, again, like I said, are better. Mostly. I'm really upset about the ASR stuff. But, um, better spells, spellcasting, I don't mind the, the proficiency instead of short rest. It's fine. I mean, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have your own thoughts, I guess. This is what I'm upset about, the other stuff is what I have now, so. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder... I don't know. I wonder how was the customer respond to the response to the leaks, if at all. So we'll see. Um, also, they're going to make errata to the old books when they release this. So I'm a little worried about that because I some of these I don't want change there, but I get it some of them. So we'll see. We'll see.